Hey, you guys, this is awesome. We've got Amy Barsky on our podcast today. I feel so privileged to have her join us. Welcome to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. We're making it possible for busy women to sculpt and tone in just 15 minutes a day. It's either great for beginners or stackable for advanced. So whether you're looking for a women's complete home gym, a free routine for consistency, or full guided workouts in our app, we've got you covered to really unleash your empowered self and step back into your confidence. So you can visit our store, bootybands.com and subscribe so you get notifications for every episode that drops every Sunday. She is this high energy celebration living spirit. She's a certified mind and body trauma informed master coach and creator of the shift method, which I'm excited to learn about. Through somatic releasing, body and breath movement, and subconscious reprogramming, she has guided clients through overwhelm, negative thoughts, anxiety, low self-esteem, and past trauma towards more clear, confident, and committed to living a place of more joy and worthiness. So, oh my gosh, Amy, thank you for being here today. I'm so excited to be here to connect with the beautiful community that you have cultivated over the years. And uh, yeah, you have this fascinating story that I just want to go right into. You okay. talked about how you've been in this struggle for 22 years and now have this massive, amazing breakthrough. So can you tell us about where this all began? Well, in a nutshell, so... <laughs> It's so fascinating how the mind and body are so connected. Uh, the body is a living library of all of our experiences and our mind is meant to keep us safe, right? So if we are in a heightened traumatic experience, whatever that might be, our mind will take us to places to keep us safe. And so we call those fight, flight, freeze, or appease. Those are usually the four strategies of coping mechanisms to get through something. And so often in those experiences, wherever the mind goes to keep you safe becomes a seed that's planted in the subconscious mind, which turns out to be a limiting belief. So you'll plug in, I'm not safe, or I'm not worthy, or I'm not good enough, or I'm unlovable, I'm broken. And then you start to carry the shame and guilt around all of those things. And so for my experience, when I was 19 years old, I wasn't in college at the time. I didn't do the regular route that everyone did. I moved out at 18. I was really young and I was like, I'm going to prove to the world I can do it on my own. And all the stories from childhood were also built upon this next experience I'm sharing. And so a friend of mine says, Hey, Amy, do you want to go to a frat party? I'd never been to a college. I wasn't in school. I didn't have a lot of friends. I was very, mm, I'll say lonely. I was very, I, I isolated myself because I was often struggling with depression as a child as well, because I, I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. So for me not to fit in, I would I would look for the ways of how I didn't fit in. Like when we, when we look for the evidence of anything we want, we find it, right? And so I felt very um, insecure and isolated most of my, my teenage years. And when a friend of mine invited me to this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the opportunity. I get to hang out with cool kids. I'm gonna experience what a fraternity looks like. Like this is gonna be the most amazing thing. And uh, so my friend picks me up and we drive into the city and I live in a, at the time I was living in a very small town. And so I drove into a city, Philadelphia. It's a pretty big city, metropolitan city. And I arrive at the party and it looks exactly like it did in the movies and all like the college movies, the beer pong with the red cups and the kegs and the dancing. And back then this was, you know, in the nineties. So lots of smoking, which I'm, I'm sure still happens now. I don't know. Anyway, so I was like, whoa, I, my mind was just blown away. So I go over, I get myself a beer, I'm hanging out, dancing, meeting people, you know, just ha experiencing life. And I didn't, I don't remember drinking a whole lot. However, uh, as the night went on and I don't have a lot of memory. I just put the mental pic pictures together. I um, ended up upstairs in a bedroom and my limbs were extremely heavy. I couldn't lift up my arms or my legs and I could barely hold my eyes open. It was very just like, oh my God, like I was trying to see. And I hear, I hear a lot of men's voices, like male voices. And I didn't really know what was happening. And I don't know how much time went by. I don't remember faces. I do remember my friend come in the room, like the door swung open and they grabbed my arm and like pulled me off the bed and i'm like trying to stumble down the stairs into the car my 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 blouse is torn my breast is exposed they're like covering me up and uh i go they take me to my house 
And I don't even remember getting from the car to the bed, but here I was the next morning um, with a terrible like hangover that I've never experienced in my life and having to pee like we do in the morning. I'm like, I have to go to the restroom. So I went into the bathroom and I sat down and, you know, relieved myself. And I went to use the toilet paper and a condom came, was hanging out of my body. So I was in such shock and I just couldn't, I had to, I had to literally pull it out. And I remember curling onto the floor, crying hysterically and trying to put images together of like, what the fuck can I curse? What the F, what the F happened? Um, Cause nothing made sense. And so the story I told myself was, this is my fault. I can't tell anyone I'm too ashamed. No one will ever understand me. I don't even have facts to, to, to share, to actually do anything about it. So I decided to brush it under the rug as if it never happened. I don't know the time frame of like that decision and like how long I may have or may not have cried or felt all the emotions around it. I really don't remember that. This is what happens though. The mind decided to delete it because our mind is manipulative. It'll delete, distort and disorganize thoughts and, and experiences because it wants to protect us. And so at some point I completely forgot about this. Cut to 22 years later, cut to divorced, cut to crappy relationships, cut to low self-esteem, self-worth, um, lack of confidence, and cut to actually, as I look back, I was in a story of men only want one thing. I'm only good for one thing. I only have to, I have to give them that to get this, which was sex for love, which is the story I told myself. And so these were beliefs that were lingering through my subconscious mind for decades and i was at a point where i was in my healing journey and i was so excited because things were really starting to unfold and really like i said wow this is i could see the patterns and habits and i was creating new beliefs for myself creating a new life for myself and uh i was so ready to call in my king my partner i was like i'm ready i i feel so excited and aligned and so this gentleman came into my life and we were in our first few months of dating and these memories started flashing back pictures of that evening pictures of me in the bathroom pulling the condom out of my body pictures of me on the floor like mental images were flashing in my mind and i started having pain in my physical body my left side started to hold so much pain like someone was stabbing me and i was really lucky because i was already in a place of healing so i was working with coaches and and, and in that in the work already i'll say and I didn't really know what to do with this because I, it was just almost like it, it had happened all over again. And so I started working with trauma coaches. And so it's been about six years now that I've been in the healing of this. And it's so beautiful to experience layers that get shown or revealed and moved through. And then you feel good. And then you're like, okay, great. Things are, things are feeling, you know, back to alignment and so, like sovereign in myself, you know, mm -hmm. and then something else exposes, you know, a trigger comes up, uh, healing the masculine wound of it's not safe. It's not safe to be around men. men again, the, the strong one is men only want one thing. And I would always look at men and go, nope, you only want one thing. Even in my, my social media, I'll get a DM. And the first thing I say, because it's a guy and all they're doing is saying, hi, my association is F you, you only want one thing. Mm. And it's not fair. And it's not, it's my ego. That's my wounded ego. And I, I said, hold on, Amy, like, let's look at this. Let's, let's start to create a new story for yourself. Mm. And so now my, my practice these days is men are safe, use discernment, men are safe, use discernment, be discerning. Because there still are, you know, if we are bright, beautiful lights in the world, every moth is going to fly to the to the light. So how do I know what is um, healthy for me and what's not is I get to trust my intuition. I get to use discernment and figure out, OK, give this person a chance versus just F you. Nope, you're not, you know, and so my body held on to this experience until my belief is until you're ready when you're at a soul evolution when your soul is ready to receive the medicine that's there that's when 
the available healing can happen. I'm a firm believer in that, that there's a ready, there's something here when we're triggered, that's a red, that's a signal. Oh, well, let's, let, let's learn what this, what is this about? Let's get curious. I'm curious. Why did I react that way? Why do I feel this way? What's happening internally? Because the body is there showing something, whether it's an upset stomach, sweaty palms, teary eyes, sweaty armpits, like whatever it might be, the body is signaling something before the brain turns on. Mm. If we listen to our bodies and start asking curious questions, we'll have more insight versus trying to intellectualize. I call it mental gymnastics. I can do the mental gymnastics all day long, but if I don't deal with the stuff that's living in the body, it's taking up real estate. So when I just move that energy, that stuck energy, that stuck limiting belief, I can create more freedom, which creates more space for what I do want in my life now. I have gotten probably emotional about three times so far, like verge of tears of how mm -hmm. beautiful your story is mm -hmm. and how strong of a light, like you just mentioned that you are and that this healing I can feel and everybody on the call listening, like, can you just feel her light, this power, this beauty, this magnificent woman that she has become through healing. Yeah. And so that's my, my question then for you based on our topic today of why your mind and body need each other for long-term healing. Tell us a little more about that. Well, that's a great question. And it's so fascinating. And, and I, sh I'm so passionate about this now because I did for quite some time, the mental gymnastics. I'm, I think mind hacking is great. Going into the subconscious mind and working through limiting beliefs, absolutely fantastic, a part of the journey. But to me, from my experience, that was a Band-Aid. It, it was a solid Band-Aid for a while. But if you don't deal with the actual physical somatics, because our physiology holds on to stuff. So if you're not working with the body as well, you'll get short-term healing. If you work with the body and the mind together as a collective, you'll you'll get those long term results that you desire. So take us even for people that are very new to this, this this mm -hmm. stuff, it makes a lot of sense for me and I can yeah. immediately connect yeah. with you. But let's let's even take it down to people that okay. don't really understand what that is. So using your story, tell us what that means. Bring it breaking that down a little bit more. How did you use mind and body to heal this yeah. process? So when I was working with my coaches, we would do uh, the the mental, okay, well, like bring up as many, mem many memories as you can, because sometimes, most often, when people experience sexual assault, molestation, they don't remember the actual story. They just, there's a knowing, there's just internal knowing, uh, or maybe they have one tiny snippet, you know, and so we don't need the whole big story. We get to listen to the body. So along with, if you have the story, if you have those mental images and, and remember it, great. If not, it's all good. We also tap into the body and it's, uh, we go in and we literally ask the body, okay, where do you feel? Where is this energy at? Where is it living, taking up real estate? And for me, it was in my left side. And it was a very, and I, I described it, right? I described it as this, <laughs> interesting it was like almost like a ball of yarn but it wasn't yarn they were um like rusty old hangers all entwined together with like prickly things sticking out like i, I literally described it like brown rusty balled up iron hangers with pricklies and it was stabbing me you know wow. like that's what it felt so we go in and we give it we give it a, a a name a color a shape maybe a size a weight a a movement if it's moving and so we talk to those parts that part of me because we have different parts right we have our true self and then we have all the parts that exist your procrastinator your warrior your self sabotager your inner critic like all these other parts and so this part of me this worthiness part of me or feeling unworthy was stuck in this this tight ball and as we did somatic releasing breath work uh particular various movements for the hips um different somatic practices basically which is movement of the body and so i went through sessions of physically moving my body so that I could start to move that stuck energy so that it could finally release. And what happens if you don't release stuck energy? Uh, it takes up real estate and it probably infl it causes inflammation, IBS, 
uh, headaches, migraines, back pain, it's a lot of back pain for a lot of my clients anyway, experience a lot of black back pain and even um, uh, indigestion, like constant acid reflux. Like your body is telling us, it's always sharing information. It, we, we get to tune in and listen. I did breath work for the first time um, that Cindy shared with me. And I think that she got it from you. And it was fascinating about how much the body really can mm. speak to us. And some of us, some, some that may be listening, that sounds like, how is this, is this woo woo? Like what scientific part do you know that this actually <laughs> is a little bit more than not woo woo for well, those that are listening? Right. No. And I go, I get it because I have to say, full transparency. I don't feel I'm very woo woo. I love science and facts and, and, and the neuroscience and the studies that have been done. I want, and again, this is probably my ego speaking. I want the fact, the science before the um, willingness to try. And that's something I'm working on because that means my trust isn't quite sovereign, right? It's not quite, Oh, you trust God, source, spirit, universe, whatever you want to call it. And this is something I'm working. I'm still human. Just because I'm a coach doesn't mean I'm freaking perfect, right? I'm still human. I still have my triggers. I still have my shit, right? And so I like to know things and for reasons like this, because I feel the more we can understand it, the, the, I'll speak for myself, the more I can understand it, the deeper I can go. So the science around, I specifically work with holotropic breath work, which is a three count pattern that infuses so much oxygen into your system at a quick pace. It's they, they associate it with LSD or mushrooms without the actual medicine. It's your own medicine, right? So you're on this natural high. And what's good about breath work is that, you know, if anyone listening has experienced the other plant medicines, once you take it, you're done, like you're in the ride. You can't that's it. You're on the ride, whether you like it or not. <laughs> With breath work, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of, oh, I can come out, take a breath and go back in. You know, like you can, you can eject if you're like, holy shit. The one thing we don't want to do is, is cause more trauma or re-trauma, right? And so there's this element of I'm on my journey in my breath work session and I get to allow I get to edge, I get to stretch myself. And if it feels too much, too fast, too soon, I get to come back. Wow. And so, yeah, and holotropic breathwork to me is so much fun because you curate a playlist. So it's all set to music. It's all guided. There's no guessing. It's lots of um, beautiful music played in a journey that's inner child and forgiveness and bringing images in letting the anger and the beast we all okay first off y'all i don't have anger i don't yeah you do don't lie to yourself we all have anger we all have rage we all I'm sorry i should say we all experience anger we all experience rage it's it's our society that says oh that's too scary or ourselves that's really scary to really let your rage that beast unleash itself and feel really scary so when I host breath work, I create a very safe and sacred space in the hopes that you feel so safe, you feel so held, so um, available and open that it, it naturally comes and it does its thing and there's really no guessing about it. So when it's time to have the tantrums and time to fully like unleash the beast that's within there, it's, it's like, okay, let's go. It's almost like you want to, you're like, you can't wait for that moment, that permission slip. Mm. Yeah. So, wow. You're the story and, and obviously the passion and obviously you're a walking, breathing, living example of what you mm -hmm. preach and teach. And so take us through now, what has life been since that experience when you were with this guy and that's kind of where you left off last with us was you're with this guy and all of a sudden you're trying to have this amazing relationship with him, but then you're having these crazy flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Take us back to this time. So then you started going through your healing journey. What, hap what happened? Yeah. You know, on the journey, it was rough because at that point in my life, I was in, in a place of assumption that a man a a you know a man can hold this kind of energy or this share and it was it was first off when we assume we're probably not going to get very far right we're going to be disappointed 
it's going to lead to disappointment. Expectations and assumptions are, are the quickest way to disappointment. And so I assumed that when I shared this, I would be held, I would be like, there would be empathy and all these things. Well, he had never in his life had been exposed to that. He's been one of the fortunate men who have never had a sister or a friend or anything. So it was very foreign. And so it wasn't received as well as I would have liked it to been received. And it caused a lot of conflict. And uh, it's interesting because as I look back, it's been six years now, like I mentioned, I, I see what story I told myself around him not being able to receive my share. And the story was, it's not safe here. It, I can't share everything with you because if I share everything, there's going to be um, a price to pay. Like you, you, you'll feel I'm broken, I'm no good, there's shame there, like all, again, a ton of stories. So working through all of that. And, and I didn't know this until just recently, I was carrying a shit ton of judgment around my choices. And, and what, does that, what does that mean? Uh, judgment around your choices. What I does that mean? Judgment around how I was treating my body. My, I was, because what I was doing was going, well, if I get, if I, if I sleep with them, they'll give me, they'll, they'll love me. I'll be loved if I give them this. And that was my, my GPS for a while. And it was a very unhealthy way because it was now that I look at it from a different place, I disrespected my body. I didn't, I didn't carry the self-worth that I, that I now know that I'm deserving of, that I'm worthy of, but I didn't know my worth then. Mm -hmm. And so I was repeating patterns. I was repeating the same thing over and over. And in those repetitions, uh, I was judging myself for the, the choices of, you know, having a one night stand or whatever it was. Mm. And so I was carrying all that judgment with me. So and let so, me, yeah. so let me ask, um, is somebody that's listening and they've had some sort of trauma in their life and mm. they are finding it hard to express and share with people, for example, yourself, you held it in for so long and now you're trying to express it to this guy, but you're saying he didn't have the, ca the capacity to really fully open mm -hmm. his arms to you, right? So how would you help somebody that's maybe listening to this that hasn't shared their story? They're very inspired by your willingness to open up about this, which is obviously, by the way, super commendable, by the way. So what would you, what steps would you tell them there? I, well, if you are keeping a secret... Uh, and you haven't told anyone, you are giving the power over to that experience. You're handing your power over to that experience, whether it's molestation, childhood abuse, childhood neglect, relationship, you know, uh, abuse, you know, physical abuse, mental, whatever it is that you might be holding a secret around in fear of judgment, you are judging yourself and you are handing your power over to that experience. And therefore that experience is the mental capacity of how you're making decisions moving forward in life. So you're saying it can affect and what can it affect? Well, if I am holding on to shame or guilt around choices, I am having a, a belief system of I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of a healthy relationship. I'm not worthy of feeling safe in my body. I'm not worthy of the full spectrum of love. And therefore, and I'm just, we'll, so we'll, we'll talk specifically around relationship to self and, and others, potentially romantic relationship. However, that worthiness ripples out into everything. Well, I'm not worthy to ask my boss for a promotion because I don't think I deserve it. I'm not worthy to ask for my needs to be met for my friends. I am probably going to be a people pleaser. So I fit in. So people love me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a good one. <laughs> Did you hear that one? All you people pleasers out there. I know you're out there. I'm yeah. one of them. I'm one of them too. I'll raise my hand. Okay. All right. All right. I just want to stop. Keep. Well, we people please to fit in. We want to fit in. We want so desperately to be, this is me, me. I'll speak for myself because I, you know, I wanted so desperately to fit in to anything and everything that I would people please my ass off. Even if it wasn't a sovereign. Yes. Even if it felt so crappy and that includes sleeping with men. So what did you do to break that? How were you able to stop people pleasing? Still working on it. <laughs> 
the real talk. Like I'm still human. Right. And so it's, it's, so I call it a pivot. It's the pivot. It's the, it's the catch and release. When you hear that limiting belief, when you hear that inner voice, oh, aha, I hear you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for showing up because it's only there to protect you. The parts of us that are are not our true self, our whole self, our pure divine self are there to protect us because they came, they came along at a point in life where something traumatic, little T or big T happened. And there came the anxiety part of us, the self sabotager, the inner critic, the perfectionist part, the people pleaser part, something happened. Oh, if I do this, I'll get that. I'll talk briefly on a side note. So there's, there's, three things in the human design that we crave. Well, we crave two and the third is the result, safety and approval. If I don't feel safe or I don't feel loved or approved of, I'm gonna see how I can control things and manipulate it so that I do feel safe. For instance, say I move into a really nice neighborhood and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I feel safe in my home. And then your neighbor gets burglarized, someone breaks in. And now you're like, oh shit, I don't feel safe. Well, how do I control that? I go put in a security system. I want to feel safe. So I'm going to take precaution to feel safe. How can I control it? Put in a system that helps me feel safe. So we put in systems to control things so that we feel safe. And the, and obviously a security alarm would be good though, but what are sure. some things that could not be good as far as control? Okay. Um, I'll, when I lose 15 pounds, I'll start dating again. Then I'll feel sexy in my body. Then other people will like me. I'm handing my power outside myself. When I have a certain amount of money in the bank, then I will, um, whatever, buy that thing I've been desiring or take that vacation. Or when I, um, when I, uh, let's say ask for that promotion, right? Then I'll do X, Y, Z. So I'm, I'm putting my power outside myself. Okay. So there's safety. So you said safety. So we go to the control and, and put so ourselves safety in there. And, safety and approval. So we look for approval. We look for safety. And if we don't find those things, we want to control things to help us feel those things. So how do we hack this so that we're not <laughs> going into that? This is, this is where we get to play and i really want it to be a playful experience like a, with a lot of my clients we are doing deep trauma we are doing a lot of inner child work we are doing a lot of um relationship work within self because it's showing up externally why why i keep attracting the same same person personality but different body why do i keep having the same experiences well who's the common denominator you are Right. And so the way the one of the ways we can work through this is, again, somatic releasing, getting into the body, getting into where is it at? What what created this? Where was it born? And then moving through and asking this beautiful part with love and compassion and acceptance of these parts, because if we keep saying, oh, I'm trying to get rid of fear, I'm trying to get rid of or um, my procrastinator self, right? We don't want to get rid of these parts because that means you're dismissing, you are spiritual bypassing, right? We don't, we want to accept because they're still going to be there. They just don't get to drive the car. You want your true higher self to be driving the car. You want the true higher self to be uh, on the GPS, the road, right? Steering the wheel, playing the music, hitting the gas or the brakes. The other parts get to sit in the back seat or the trunk. Like they get to sit, they're there. And so when we go in and we talk to these parts and we have conversations with this, these beautiful parts of ourselves, they get to have a new role. They get to come into, because what happens is they're living in the past. They are going right to that seven-year-old, that nine-year-old, that 14-year-old, that 22-year-old. They're not in present moment of Amy here right now. They're not. They're the past versions of myself. So how can these beautiful parts come forward and play in the present that actually serve me? Because we still need discernment. We still need fear so I don't cross the street and get run over by a car, right? So it's, it's the degrees. And how can they be in this party and go on this ride and still be fully expressed and loved on? And so a lot of times that's the inner child work. Oh my gosh, Amy, this is, this is phenomenal. Can you guys just feel how... <laughs> passion she is and how knowledgeable she is and that she has lived 
herself through her work. And yeah. if you guys are feeling that and you're seeing this right now and you're currently struggling with some overwhelming emotions or depression or anxiety or trauma in your life, you guys have to reach out to Amy. Yeah. So Amy, where can they find you or follow you if they're interested in really working on their trauma? Oh my gosh. I, the easiest way to find me is on Instagram, Amy Barsky coaching. So pop on Instagram, shoot me a DM and say, Hey, you know, I listened to that podcast and it was so whatever your takeaways were and come in and let's start a conversation. That's one of the easiest ways. I do have a website as well. My name, amybarsky.com. However, like let's, let's start a, 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 a relationship you know, yeah. and so I check out my content. I've got some freebies on there too. We can do some breath work and, and see if we're a good fit. And I'll make it easy for everyone and just put her links down below, but oh, yeah. she, her Amy coaches people around the globe who feel stuck in these similar patterns. And what she does is she focuses on empowering them with tools to really restore their self-worth and reclaim their lives. So if you're mm -hmm. interested in that, you guys, I mean, Amy is not only, obviously we're doing this podcast with each other of just like learning and growing as entrepreneurs, we're friends and we're met with a really close friend of ours. And it's been able to have that deeper connection as well. So mm -hmm. Amy, allow Amy to become one of your friends as she's saying let's have a relationship yeah. let's open up that conversation so thanks again Amy for taking your time today and sharing with us your wisdom this was really beautiful awesome wrapping up we hope that this left you with some valuable information that you can help with improving your mind your body and your life Really, we're about helping you step into your best self, and that's why we do these weekly, so that we can hear from you and how it resonated. So go ahead and write us a review, and we will pick weekly giveaways on our unique booty bands to give away. So thank you guys so much for listening. It was awesome having you on. I'm very excited to leave your review. Make sure to hit subscribe so that you can get notified on any future podcasts that come out. And of course, join the community and join the app called Booty Bands and Barbells, where you'll find us in the workouts, the meal plan, and of course, all the fun challenges. I'll see you soon, and I'll see you in the workouts.